Okay, everything everything's fine. Yes. Um, okay, so hi, hello everyone. I'm Luigi, uh, and then we talk you um, talk about BrainGlobe, uh, a Python ecosystem for computational neural anatomy. Um, we all know very well that neuroscience is moving uh, more and more toward uh, the direction of collecting collecting data sets that are uh, bigger and bigger, and recent uh, advancement and techniques allow us to. Uh, really address um, neuroscientific questions at the whole brain scale, like from the whole brain connectomics and transcriptomic data that the Allen Institute is collecting to the whole brain imaging that we can perform in fish and even in mouse using their recent ultrasound imaging techniques. Um, we will uh, get, like, we are getting in a direction where we will need to make sense uh, of more and more of those uh, data at the entire brain level. Um, and of course, we will um, need um, new software for uh, analyzing this um, this new kind of data that we are um, about to uh, to work with. And uh, actually, in the in the recent years, there are uh, many packages that have been uh, coming out to uh, actually uh, perform analysis and visualization and quantifications on um, such kind of data sets. Um, a limitation of the software that um, has been uh, developed so far is that uh, most of those um, softwares have been developed with one single atlas or one single species um, or one single annotation of one single species in mind. And uh, the most common one, of course, has been the uh, Allen Brain Atlas. Um, and actually, uh, our story starts from uh, one of those tools, which is Brain Render, which is a fantastic software that Federico Claudi developed at SWC in London. Um, which is a software for um, making uh, very nice vis three-dimensional visualizations of different kinds of data from gene expression to connectivity data to electrophysiology data um, using very simple Python scripts. And I saw this and uh, it looked amazing, uh, but you know, um, I work with fish, so I, I had little usage for something that was working with the uh, Allen, SD, uh, Allen SDK for mouse. Um, and luckily, at the same time, uh, Federico Claudi was actually uh, reaching out in the community, uh, wondering whether people might be interested in uh, using his software outside just the um, mouse community. Uh, and I just saw this tweet, uh, and it looked amazing. It was also already in contact with uh, Adam Tyson, which is the third person we started this with. And so we decided to join forces and start to work together also on something that would make our software to work uh, across different uh, species and atlases. So we started looking around and of course we found uh, a whole bunch of uh, atlases that expert uh, like laboratories that are expert in your anatomy have been developed in the years um, and basically every animal model uh, that has uh, common use in neuroscientific research uh, as one or uh, most in most cases multiple annotations that are available. Um, the problem is that many of those API, like those atlases, have interfaces um, that are web only. So um, you can you can go to the website of the atlas. You can search through the areas that describe. Sometimes they also serve um, data. Um, like um, there is a zebrafish uh, atlas that also serves um, single cell tracing data or uh, transgenic line uh, expression data. Um, but they, those are web only. On the other side, there are uh, tools that uh, makes, uh, make the data uh, available locally, like the Allen SDK package, which is great, but it's a very big package that serves both the uh, Atlas um, generation and also, uh, also uh, a lot of project-specific um, data that uh, might, like, makes, the, makes the, um, the Python package much larger than this, this specific usage. Um, which means that in general, um, this step, like if one to uh, want to um, really generate uh, agnostic um, atlas agnostic software that might work with different um, different atlases for different animal models, one that is not really provided with uh, one single interface for for doing this. Um, and we actually uh, saw that like we are Python programmers, but we saw that in the R community there like actually something along those lines has been already developed, which is uh, um, the NatWorks package, uh, from the, especially from the Connectomics um, community. Um, but we were missing uh, a, similar, a similar concept in, in Python, and we decided to um, come up with our, um, with our solution, which is, um, which is like, in general, an, an umbrella term uh, to the standards that we're using, which is like, we like to call ourselves the Brain Globe uh, organization, and in particular, we produce this Brain Globe um, Atlas API, 
which is um, a minimal lightweight module with very little dependencies to use reference spaces in uh, whatever Python package or you might be develop or your uh, analysis pipelines. Um, and the basic idea of distribution of atlases uh, in, in BrainGlobe uh, is that uh, there, there's us, the BrainGlobe developers, who scratch data from uh, uh, different, like from different sources, which might be the LMOS uh, brain reference or um, like uh, atlases that have been developed for uh, their online, uh, for the, their uh, web tools. Um, we are interacting also with the, uh, with the people who actually generate those atlases. Uh, and we um, we put those atlases in a standard format that then can be very easily accessed uh, by the uh, final brain group users using a single uh, like a single class that is just instantiating uh, instantiated with specifying different atlas names. Um, how does it work? Well, um, installation is as simple as uh, it can get in Python. Um, and the usage is very simple. Uh, there is, for example, the shows atlases function that tell us um, what data do we have uh, locally, what uh, data uh, is available for um, download. Actually, if we, uh, if we don't have, um, uh, if we don't have uh, an atlas, the moment we instantiate the, uh, the atlas class, it will uh, download it for us. Uh, if we have it already um, locally, it just generates the object as it happened now, when I just um, called, um, uh, generate, the, generate it. Um, and this brain globe atlas object contains a full description of the atlas uh, with the metadata the source of the publication the, the source of the publication uh, the hierarchy that is um, uh, comp um, comprehended in that um, in that atlas uh, and the most importantly the stacks so the reference brain that you can use for uh, aligning your data to an annotation uh, and an annotation stack that contains the information of um, voxel wise on uh, information about the brain regions and then also pre-computed structure meshes that uh, people can use for uh, their own um, three-dimensional visualizations um, so i go through a little uh, literal demo of the class so here we're just generating um, a brain globe atlas of the uh, allen mouse uh, brain at 100 micrometers resolution um, just printing it um, produce all the uh, information about this atlas um, and then we can very easily access the structures uh, hierarchy that is uh, described in this atlas. So uh, the structures property um, will just print for us, um, like printing it will just print for us the full, the full hierarchy of the brain regions. And we can query it as we would do uh, with a dictionary to get information about, for example, uh, visual cortex. Um, and it will print for, print that for us is a, a little dictionary that we can use. Um, the very, very important part is uh, the reference tags. Uh, so reference and annotation tags are uh, just properties of the uh, brain globe atlas object. Um, so we can uh, very easily uh, fetch them. And at this point, they are, um, they are just NumPy arrays that uh, we might uh, want to plot. For example, here, I'm just plotting uh, a slice uh, in, the middle, uh, in the middle of the stack. And if I now look at the uh, annotation, this is just providing me um, like uh, the same image with uh, a number that corresponds to each brain region that is um, comprehended in this uh, in this stack. Um, there's also uh, methods for um, already automatically querying uh, the the atlas, for example, asking which structure is like uh, is located at some given coordinates, um, which um, and there's also utilities for, uh, for example, generating the mask for, um, for a specific region. So let's assume we want uh, a mask that has ones where the cortex is and zeros where the uh, and zeros outside. We can just use the uh, get structure mask uh, method that create that stack for us. Um, and if we now plot it uh, at the same level, uh, at the same slice, uh, we can see that now we have uh, an image of just the cortex of the um, in the atlas at that point um, and we have been developing it but also already implementing it um, in the tools that i started all of this for <laughs> like for finally <laughs> getting to use um, and uh, this uh, this actually produced 
that allow, allow me to, uh, to perform the same kind of visualization that Fede was able to do for mice, uh, but now for, uh, for fish, uh, which I like much more. Um, and with Adam, we have been also implementing, um, like, uh, we have also adding uh, bring, uh, bring multi, uh, multi atlas support in uh, his program cell finder which is a great software uh, for performing neural network based detection of uh, of neurons labeled in whole brain data sets so you can see here a uh, very brief overview of the software where the image uh, is analyzed in a way that uh, find all uh, all valid uh, neurons that are in the image it does it on all like in whole brain data sets um, and allow them to visualize them also using, uh, in this case, brain render. Um, and using Brain of Atlas API, a uh, self finder user uh, can, well, at the moment they can, for example, compare the results in um, a, a different annotation from the Allen mouse brain, which is the uh, team enhanced Atlas where some regions are annotated with um, finer resolution. But one, that, like, one could also think of uh, using the software for, um, uh, performing the same analysis on even different uh, different species. Um, so this is leading us to like um, the concept of a full ecosystem of applications that uh, are all interacting with the like this core uh, Brain Globe Atlas API uh, package, and so they, they kind of use the same standards and formats um, and are compatible uh, with each other. Uh, so apart from Brain Render and Filer, there is Brain Reg, which is a package for uh, for whole brain image registration, uh, we there's also an Apari plugin. Luigi. Um, there's also a Napari plugin uh, that can be used for uh, for both exploring the atlases and um, having a look at the uh, at the results of the registrations that uh, has been done with BrainRag. Um, so we just came out with uh, version 1.0, um, but of course, like uh, we are at, a, at an early stage of the problem uh, of the project. So uh, we really uh, we are really looking for uh, the feedback from potential users. In particular, if you if you would like to use uh, some specific atlas in your Python analysis, um, uh, or on the other side, if your lab as a as a uh, as an atlas that might be useful to share, but you don't have the uh, the tools for developing a, a web application or like you don't want to take care of the distributions yourself, uh, just reach out. We are very happy to uh, include more data sets in our project. Uh, and we are also looking forward for uh, uh, interested people interested in integrating it uh, uh, with their own uh, software for uh, whatever kind of analysis. But of course, also in just um, um, also in uh, like the, the scripts that people use for uh, their internal analysis, uh, Brain Globe can definitely be uh, uh, an interesting thing to, to check out. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, on, on GitHub, um, so reach out. Um, with this, I would like to thank uh, all the new contributions contributors to, um, to the project and the API. So Federico and Adam with whom uh, we started the project and also Nick De Grosso who recently joined and will sure help us um, improving it even more our supervisors our hosting institutions um, and of course you for your attention all right uh, thank you for very much luigi very uh useful and very intuitive tool that you just described to us and we have uh time for a few questions so one question we have is from edwin is it possible to generate cuts at arbitrary angles for the purposes of mapping experimental samples? So um, there's actually, uh, there's actually a, an ongoing uh, projects, uh, project that, uh, well, I'm not following like the Adam, Adam and Nick are involved to this for uh, exactly um, looking, like going in the direction of um, generating an interface for uh, registration of slices at different angles. Uh, at the moment, this is not supported. You might, you would uh, need to use your own tools for like cutting the stack. Um, but in the future, hopefully we will get there. Okay, thank you. Uh, we actually have one more question from Thomas, but we are uh, out of time. So if you have time, Luigi, please check it in Q&A box and maybe you can answer to him um, in the chat. 
So, um, and we are going to move to our next.